Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this video, and it's a debate between Gloria Steinem and Melissa Harris Perry, um, who at the time was named Melissa Harris Lacewell, and it's about the social justice implications of the primary between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and I think it's really interesting the ways in which Gloria Steinem is just, just a stereotype of the kind of Eurocentric feminist I'm talking about. The video starts out with Hillary Clinton basically preaching about, like, let's be colorblind. And I know she says let's not focus on race and gender, but let's be honest. The ways in which we perceive gender versus the ways in which we perceive race are different. And her gender is so performed in everything that she does, right? And I'm not just, like, I'm not criticizing her for being a cis woman. I'm just saying, like, I am 100% sure that there are people who work for her who are, like, working on her femininity, who are, like, you cannot sit up here and deny that, like, an integral part of her campaign is avoiding the bitch stereotype. And so to say that we should ignore race and gender, the subtext of that is, well, I'm not really ignoring gender, but I expect Obama to ignore race. Clinton emphasized race or gender should have nothing to do with the campaign. This is the most exciting election we've had in such a long time because you have an African American and you have a woman running to break the highest and hardest glass ceiling. I don't think either of us want to inject race or gender in this campaign. Today we host a discussion on race and gender politics. Gloria Steinem is a feminist pioneer, a best-selling writer. Where are the black people in this video so far? Because you have this lady on Democracy Now!, you have Hillary Clinton, and then they're introducing Gloria Steinem. Where are the black people? Where, where's Obama's clip and where are the black people? Because I'm, I'm, I'm disconcerted right now. Where, oh God. It's like this silencing has already ensued. It's like this room full of white feminists talking about like why race doesn't matter and it's horrible. Gloria Steinem recently wrote an op-ed piece for the Times supporting Hillary Clinton. It's titled, Women Are Never Front Runners. She argues Senator Obama could never have been a viable candidate if he were a woman. And asks, quote, why is the sex barrier not taken as seriously as the racial one? And why is the sex barrier not taken as seriously as the race barrier? I mean, Gloria Steinem, I know that you're like a white lady and you kind of don't get it and like people don't touch your hair and stuff and like ask you what part of Africa you're from. But really, you think the race barrier is taken more seriously than the sex barrier? I mean, we're more afraid of the race barrier. We're more afraid to talk about it. But like people talk about the 77 cents of the dollar crap and they never talk about racial disparities in like employment and socioeconomics. And I'm not playing oppression Olympics here. I think women are oppressed and I think individuals of color are oppressed. But like, for example, black people are twice as likely to be poor as white people. That's like hella daunting. And that should be right up there with the 77 cents in the dollar statistic. So don't act like we're paying attention to black people or people of color. People of color, sorry, not just black people. Now don't act like we're paying attention to just people of color and not women, because that just isn't true. White women, like, if there's a social justice issue that we're comfortable with, it's one that we can whitewash. We can whitewash feminism, so we're comfortable with it. And I know that because I get left out of feminism all the time. People don't expect me to be a feminist because I'm black. And they see those things as an opposition, right? And they see me as not a real woman. Ain't I a woman too? And so don't act like... Just don't act like there's something where we ignore women over people of color because it's just not true. Melissa Harris Lacewell is associate professor of politics and African American studies at Princeton University. She joins us now from Princeton, New Jersey. We welcome you both to Democracy Now. Gloria Steinem, let's begin with you. Scene change. So we get to like we get to the video, right? We get past all the introductions and they're like we're going to start with Gloria Steinem. They introduced the one black person and now we're going to start with Gloria Steinem. And so I'm just going to skip because Gloria Steinem wastes a lot of time rambling about parallels, and I'm just going to get to the meat of what you say. Women of color, African-American women, have understood, have been just in a better position, you know, to understand uh, the, the roles of, of both sex and race. I could use some makeup today. 
And now I look the same. You know, it's interesting to me how Gloria Steinem says that black women have this unique view and then in the video she proceeds to just completely ignore Moisa Harris Perry. I am still trying not to choose between race and gender because the basis of my choice was not that, but that, um, in fact, Hillary Clinton uh, will arrive in Washington knowing how Washington works because she's had it written on her skin like Kafka. Congratulations, Hillary Clinton. You've had the privilege of living in the White House buried to a white man, and that's why you know Washington inside and out. And the Gloria Steinem, really written on her skin as if blackness weren't also written on individual skin. Well, I mean, honestly, I'm appalled by the parallel that Ms. Steinem um, draws in the beginning part of the New York Times article. Um, what she's trying to do there is to make a claim towards sort of bringing in black women into a coalition around questions of gender and asking us to ignore the ways in which race and gender intersect. This is actually a standard problem of second wave feminism, which although there's been 25 years now, oh, going on 40 years actually, of African American women pushing back against this. Um, have really failed to think about the ways in which trying to appropriate black women's lives experience uh, in that way is, is really uh, offensive, actually. And so um, when Steinem suggests, for example, in that article that Obama is a lawyer married to another lawyer, um, and to suggest that, for example, Hillary Clinton represents some kind of sort of breakthrough in questions of gender, I think that ignores an entire history in which white women have, in fact, been in the White House. They've been there as an attachment to white male patriarchal power. It's the same way that Hillary Clinton is now making a claim towards experience. It's not her experience. It's her experience married to, connected to, climbing up on white male patriarchy. This is exactly the ways in which um, this kind of system actually silences questions uh, of gender um, that are more complicated than simply sort of putting white women in positions of power and then claiming that women's issues um, are cared for. Now, what I know from the work that I've done on the Obama on the campaign is that there are tens of thousands of extremely hardworking white men and women as well as black men and women, uh, as well as actually a huge multiracial and interethnic coalition of people working for Barack Obama. And so for Steinem to sort of make this very clear race and gender dichotomy that she does in that New York Times op-ed piece, I think is the very worst of second wave feminism. So Harris Perry basically takes out all of Steinem's arguments in one fell swoop. And then she references the op-ed piece that Steinem wrote where she makes like three big offensive arguments. The first one is that she talks about how a black woman couldn't win the election and then like somehow makes this parallel between that and a white woman. And I would argue that I think a white woman probably could win. I don't think a black woman could win. There's because there's a difference between black womanhood and white womanhood. The primary difference being that if you're black, you're not considered a real woman and you're considered the angry black woman like look to Medea and like Tyler Perry movies and all that and so I think that in a competitive political sphere because white women are so hyper feminized you would be able to get away with claiming some of that masculine argumentative power whereas if you're a black woman you wouldn't be able to claim masculine argumentative power because you're already considered too masculine. Second she makes the argument the stock argument about how Black men got the vote before white women, therefore women are more oppressed than black people, which is flawed for two reasons. First, because black women exist. And secondly, because just because legally black men were given the right to vote, they would, could still be lynched for attempting to vote. And so that just doesn't make any sense. Third, she said that black men are somehow more empowered than other men, question mark? because they're masculinized through racial stereotypes. And I would argue the opposite. I would say that black men are stereotyped as attempting to be masculine and unable to achieve that masculinity because of the hyper-masculine mammy character or black woman stereotype. And if anything, the situations in which we do attribute masculinity to black men are the ones in which we consider black men to be like jungle animals, like mandingos, etc. And so I think I'm just generally exasperated with the op-ed piece she wrote. And I think most of Harris Perry is right.